There's our transmitter downstairs in the test lab. This is a 25 kilowatt transmitter? That's correct. Well, this is actually a 50 kilowatt transmitter. Okay, running the, at 25. the test load that we're running into is only capable, the antenna simulator is only capable of 25 kilowatts, and that's why we're operating at this power level. Fair enough. So we are operating in analog AM mode at 700 kilohertz right now. And you can see here on the spectrum analyzer that uh, we're operating obviously well inside the spectral mass. We can actually take this spectrum analyzer up to full screen. Now this is 100 dB top to bottom, and it's uh, 100 kilohertz. No, I'm sorry. It's, uh, let's see here, 625 to 775, 150, 150 kilohertz in, in width. All right, so, and we have, uh, on here, we have all of the, the uh, measurement tools. We can, we can set a marker here. We can change the kind of spectrum analyzer, I believe. Well, in, in this particular one, um, you can see here, you can adjust your span and your bandwidth resolution, right. your averaging rates, and those things all get set up automatically um, based on the operating mode. Okay. So, right. and you can modify them, but it, the, the interesting thing is whether you're, for DRM or IBOC, there's always different suggestions by the different consortiums on how to set them up, so we automatically set it up at the recommended um, mode. So that, so that you, you can see relative to the recommendations from DRM or HD radio or Where whoever. you stand with, with spectral compliance. Okay. All right. Very good. Let me bring that back down. Um, now, we have a lot of other tools in here. If I can get rid of this modulation levels, I can bring up the toolbar, and you can see all of the, the, uh, the tools that we have that we can look at. We can look at the equalizer frequency response. This is more or less a graph that we saw before. This That's is right. generated by the transmitter, and it's, it's what's providing us the perfect modulation. It's, it's the antithesis, if you will, of the, the normal modulator filter delay, or uh, uh, the amplitude. amplitude response. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back and put that back into modulation. Um, where am I going to go here? There we go, modulation. All right, let's change modes. Right now we're in analog AEM, but let's see how hard it is to go to DRM. Oops, sorry. Go to do it over sorry. here. Do a load a preset. So we've already created a DRM preset, and we can show you what we do to set that up. It just makes it a little quicker. Okay. So now we've switched to DRM, and we are actually in DRM mode at the moment, and. Um, that's how quick it was. That's right. It's that quick. It's a matter of, DR in order to run from DRM, you just tell the exciter that you want to operate at DRM and tell it where the AES input is coming into the, to the transmitter. So you plug it in, and right now we've plugged it into the digital I and Q AES input. We tell the transmitter that that's the input. We set up the level appropriately, and bang, you're in DRM and it's operating. Cool. Now, I could actually not have to go into the web interface or anything to do that. I could have actually just gone in and utilized our built-in scheduler, because what we've done then is we've said, okay, this particular station wants to operate every day from 11 to 12 in DRM mode and the rest of the time be in analog mode. So the scheduler is automatically taking care of that. That's right. And the interesting thing that we've done here is rather than forcing you to do Exciter A for DRM and Exciter B for analog operation and, and setting up maybe a, a remote input to switch at a certain time of day, you don't actually have to use the different exciter. You switch modes and you still keep your redundant exciters, um, whether you're in one mode or the other. Awesome. Okay. Now let's go ahead and let's be really difficult and let's go in and load analog plus DRM simultaneously. Okay, so now we are in analog plus DRM, and if I zoom in and make this full screen, I can actually see here's my analog signal, and here's my DRM signal on the adjacent channel. That's right. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, and we're still meeting the mask. That's right, and this is into uh, a reasonably challenging load. It's 1.51 VSWR at 15 kilohertz. Let's talk about that for a second. Can we go ahead and do that right now? Let's talk about, this is, is this the right time to do that? Or well, I, it might even be better when we're in IBOC. To have okay, a look let's at switch it. over to IBOC, cool. just for grins. While we're, while we're switching, let me ask you a question. Could you actually, not that anybody would ever want to do this, but could you actually um, switch from HD, could you have HD radio and DRM both located in the transmitter and switch from one digital mode to the other? We just did it. But, yeah, you're right. But I mean, <laughs> wow, you're right. We just did. You're right. All right, 
So there we are. Now let's zoom in on this, bring it up. This is a Smith chart, which is actually showing the performance of the transmitter within um, the real modulation. We're not taking the transmitter offline and, and uh, adjusting it or anything like that. Um, uh, we're measuring tone. This is actually with real modulation going on well, here. That's right, and that's why when we switched to operating modes, you can see that the cost changed in the amount of frequency content that was present. And the reason why I suggested we wait for IVOC to do it is because there's the most frequency content in an IVOC signal. Sure. Um, so if we were to right now switch to analog AM, you'd see the cusp shrink. Right. And that's because there's less frequency content available. Less diversion, uh, diversion of, the, of the audio. That's right. Instead of, dispersion. right now we're operating with uh, plus or minus 15 kilohertz. If you switch to analog AM, it would be 5 kilohertz. So this is a real network analyzer. I just highlighted a spot on the curve here, and I can see the, the impedance and the frequency were 7.5 kilohertz down from the carrier frequency, and that's the actual measured performance. That's right. Okay. Now, let's, can we have somebody twist, or, or can we not? Is that not we, possible? We can. I, I'd have to call someone down okay, to the room and get them. The to bottom talk. line is that if we, if we were to adjust the, the antenna, that's, that's, that's all right. If we were to adjust the antenna, so that it, we, we, we change the performance of the antenna, we would actually see it fall outside the spectrum mass. That's right. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Um, Wendell, let's talk about the meters here. Sure. Um, you, we've, got, we've pulled up from this menu here uh, various meters. We've made several choices, and th those are now displayed on here. And we can choose anything we want. We can, and what's really cool is the the, the fan tack measurement. Okay. Let's go get a fan tack measurement. I'll turn off the PA volts here. Don't even have to do that, really. I suppose I could just go grab, where is it? Fan, fan one speed. There it is. OK. So now we, we're seeing that the fan one on cube one is running at 4,260 RPM. Right. So if you had a system where your fan filters were very dirty and causing a lot of back pressure on the fans, you would see the, the fans speed would start to drop back a little bit, and that would be an indication for your maintenance crew to go out and, and clean your fans up. Okay. So it's, a, it's a great great routine maintenance tool so that you can be proactive instead of reactive. For and, and can we set up um, the ability for the transmitter to actually notify us if something falls out of a particular variance? Oh, the Smith chart's changing. Yep, see that? Now let's take a look at the spectral mask. I, as this is continuing to move, you can see here that the, the curves are starting to get closer and closer to the mask limits. That's correct. And I'm not sure how far he's going to twist it here. I asked him to give it a, a couple turns, so hopefully it'll go far enough. Yeah, you can it's see the quite, mask. Quite some distance. Yeah, you can see it now. And you can see here that we're considerably above the spectral mask at this point in time. That's correct. Wow, look at that. Now, the I have to explain. I had a, a situation one time where I was at, a, at the NAB show. We were doing this exact presentation live. Yes. And there was a young, uh, not a young man, an older man from Hong Kong who came in. I'll never forget. He came in, and I showed him this part, part of, the, of the thing. I showed it live as we cranked on the thing, and we saw the network analyzer, and we saw the spectral performance. And he cried. There were tears coming out of his eyes. And I said, what's wrong? And he says, you don't know how many nights I've spent doing this where it took hours and hours and hours with the OIB analyzer and the and th to come up with this same thing. Yes. And you've just done it in seconds. <laughs> yeah, and we've done it accurately. Because we're taking the signal from this directional coupler, regardless of the line length and VSWR on the antenna, we are actually seeing the true, true analysis of the network. That's right. And so what you see there for our spectrum analyzer, it matches very closely with the far field measurements and the near field measurements, <laughs> rather than just picking a voltage or a current sample. That's, a, that's outstanding. And in fact, to carry this incredulous thing one step further, everything I'm doing here, I could do from any place on the planet. That's right. And, and we have. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. OK. Anything else we want to show here? Anybody else got something else that they would like to? Oh, you did talk about things going outside the normal operating condition and right. notifying somebody. Yep. And in fact, you can set up parameters that it will send you an email and say, hey, 
There's something not quite right here. Isn't that cool? And you can configure that to be what you want to. Absolutely. All right. So just because one fan slowed down doesn't stop your steak dinner. Of course not. Not necessarily. Well, we, we haven't talked about the headroom and the transmitters. We talked briefly about the reliability, but if you lose a power module in a, in a 100 kilowatt transmitter, yep. the transmitter actually has a science to look at it and determine that without causing undue stress to the remainder, it will actually readjust the power back to its normal rated power. And in fact, we had a scenario like that in a 50 kilowatt transmitter in San Francisco, if I recall recently, where Kevin Rogers, our head of customer service, was logged in on a weekend to a transmitter and he noticed that there was a problem with one of the modules. The station had no idea they had a problem. He dispatched a new module out of our depot in Memphis, Tennessee to the station and they got the module before they knew they had a problem. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. And, and because we do have closed loop power control, we can do that. We can increase our power decrease. It's not open loop. So um, when a module does have a, a problem, if it's running at lower power or reduced power, um, we can increase the transmitter power to compensate and maintain coverage. Wonderful.